Hi there everyone, my name's Dave West, I hope you're all doing well. So welcome back to the ultimate video test and today I'm checking out the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3. Now as with all ultimate video tests, I'll leave all of the main camera specifications down in the description and I'll just run through some of the high level features throughout the video to help save a little bit of time. Now starting off with the selfie front facing camera as always and this is a 10 megapixel fixed focus camera and this can record video at up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Both front and rear cameras record in stereo sound and just for the rule of thumb here, 30 frames per second video from the selfie camera has electronic image stabilization, but at 60 frames per second, there is no stabilization whatsoever. So starting off with the best compromise resolution stroke frame rate, and this is great for saving space on storage or just sharing with family and friends. This is 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now one thing to mention is the Galaxy Z Flip 3, like other Samsung handsets in sort of the top tier, also has HDR video recording. Now that's buried off in a separate section. You can toggle that on and then it enables it for the rear cameras only. It doesn't record it on the front facing camera. But because standard dynamic range and high dynamic range videos don't play well in an editing timeline. Then I've done a separate video just showcasing the HDR footage from the rear cameras. And I will link that down in the description and also pop a card up on screen as well once that's been uploaded. And here's 1080p at 60 frames per second. If I just go turn around and point the camera directly at the sun, you do get some highlight blowout. It's quite typical of this. 10 megapixel selfie camera on most Samsung phones. I've noticed this on previous Samsung handsets with this selfie camera. But nicely exposed on my face and you get a bit of highlight blow in the background. But a perfectly serviceable video at 1080p at both 30 and 6PF, 60 FPS, sorry. All right, so here is 4K 30 frames per second then. Now, if you're watching on a slightly larger screen, computer monitor, TV, etc. then hopefully you can get the benefit of the higher resolution. Uh, once again, as it's 30 frames per second, we get the electronic image stabilization. And finally, just for completeness, this is 4K at 60 frames per second from the selfie camera. Now notice when I selected the 60 FPS frame rate, the crop was removed so I've, you can get a bit more of the scenery around me rather than the slightly zoomed in look you get from the electronic stabilization. But at 60 FPS you don't get any stabilization at all so it's a little bit shakier. And if I move the camera this way, then the auto exposure will concentrate on the sky. And as I move back there, we get a slight blowout, but it's not too bad to be honest. I can just tap on the screen and then move the exposure down. You can see a bit more of the sunset in the background. And then tap, and then you get the exposure on me. Right, so there's the front facing camera then. So check out the rear cameras now and show you what they're all about. All right then, so both of the rear cameras are 12 megapixel sensors. So you've got this 12 megapixel main camera and this can record video at up to 4K at 60 FPS. All right, so it's the next day and continuing after yesterday's interruption, this is the rear cameras. Uh, both of these are a 12 megapixel camera. This main camera can record video at up to 4K at 60 frames per second. And this ultra wide camera can record video at up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Now we'll just concentrate on the main camera just for a moment. So we'll just check out autofocus 
and Samsung cameras, especially for video, have always been really good with autofocus, nice and fast and smooth and quick to make changes where need be. I just pop my hand in front here and just to show you. So you get a nice smooth gradual movement between foreground subject and background, which is cool. And you get electronic image stabilization from both the main camera and the ultra wide as well, which keeps things nice and steady as you move. Now as with the front facing camera, everything records in stereo sound as well, which is great. Now slightly different conditions to yesterday, unfortunately it was nice sunset yesterday, but we'll have to put up with a slightly overcast morning for this section of the video. So there's a quick look then at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Okay, so moving up to full HD or 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now this is only available on the main lens. There's no 60 frames per second on the ultra wide camera, so we'll just have to do with this main camera. And it's not really windy this morning, so we just have to put up with some, some of me hitting this plant here just to give you an idea of the 60 FPS movement. But even if I'm walking, you should be able to get an idea of the smoother movement. Now at 1080p at 60, you do get electronic image stabilization from the main camera, but it doesn't work when you're recording at 4K at 60 frames per second. There you get no change in things like autofocus, it's nice and quick to make changes between foreground subjects and the background. It gets a nice lock as well, and you still get a decent amount of detail as well on subjects at the same time. All right, then, so 4K 30 frames per second, then from the main rear camera. And just like with 1080p at 30fps, you can toggle between the ultra wide and the main camera. And once again, autofocus, even with this tricky spider's web we can see here, is really good starting off the video. And hopefully, if you're watching a slightly larger display, monitor, TV, etc., anything bigger than a mobile screen, basically you should be able to get the benefit of the slightly better resolution at 4K. Switch to the ultra-wide camera. Now from spending two weeks with the Galaxy Z Flip 3, one thing I've noticed is, is that the video recording is extremely similar to the Galaxy S10 series. Uh, I think the cameras, I think, are the same, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the Galaxy Z Flip 3 was not meant to be sort of a flagship camera experience, even though its price is around about £1,000. Uh, this is obviously really awesome technology if you've uh, ever used one yourself you'll know just how great it is the screen technology is absolutely fantastic and that awesome hinge on the phone as well uh, but the cameras uh, they're good but um, you know the experience is not flagship level despite the price tag so it's just a reminder that you know if you're buying one of these they don't expect flagship camera experience it's just really decent in my opinion. So there is 4K 30 frames per second from both the main and ultra wide cameras.
Okay, so this is 4K at 60 frames per second. Now, as I said, this is only available on the main camera lens and not the ultra wide. And also remember this is not stabilized in any way, so you don't get any electronic image stabilization at 4K 60. Uh, trying to keep as steady as possible here. And hopefully with the smoother movement of 60 FPS, you should be able to get a better idea of a more lifelike movement with the river in front of me here. And let's just check out autofocus on some closer subjects. Now, even with the river running in the background, the phone is still doing a decent job of getting a lock on subjects. But you let me know what you think of things like the colours and the general exposure and detail of the image at 4K60. You certainly don't get any of the, the highlight issues that you do from the front facing camera. Everything seems nice and reasonably well exposed throughout the scene, even though it's a bit overcast. So that is all of the main modes from the rear camera up to 4K60. Let's show you some of the other options which are available now on the Galaxy Z Flip 3. Okay, so this has been around now for a good few years. This is the super steady video mode. Now, a good thing is this is actually available now on the ultra wide cameras as well, not just the main camera. Now, the idea is, is that The phone does a really heavy crop on the video and all those bits around the edges of the frame where you can't see are being used to super stabilize the video so you get a much steadier stabilization. It's only available at 1080p at 30 frames per second. But hopefully this will give you an idea of how this stabilization works. It's pretty much like using a gimbal. You even get the sort of step movements as you move the camera around as the stabilization is just working its magic to give you that super stabilized look. All right, so this is pretty cool. This is the director's view mode. Now I'm just showing you this as a screen recording just to give you an idea of how it works. So you've got me up in the corner there on the selfie camera. And if I swipe up, you can then see the main camera and then the ultra wide camera. So I suppose this gives you an idea of which is the best shot to frame. And you can see these really cool live previews as I move the, the phone around to get the best shot. So hence director's view, just so you can get the, the best idea of which shot is going to be best. And I can just flick through the main and ultra wide cameras. I can't actually switch to the selfie, but even if I was to press record, it will then record whichever is on the lens you selected. So that's director's view and it's just a, a quick preview just to show you how this cool little option works. All right, so most phones have this these days. This is portrait video mode. Now this works on both the selfie and the main rear camera and it works very similar to your phone's standard portrait mode where finds a face, gives you a nice blurred background, and then records it as a video. 
It's only available up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Uh, but this is just a demonstration from the selfie camera just to give you an idea of the quality. Now in good lighting, you do get a nice effect as well and the cutout is pretty good as well. You get a nice sort of quality to the image as well even though it's only at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now what I have noticed if I'm looking on the screen is there's a slight delay uh, with my voice. So it kind of looks like a crappy old Japanese movie with bad dubbing. But this is a pretty cool effect and you even get good exposure levels as well in the backgrounds there's no highlight clipping or blowing out now the only problem is with this it's not really a problem but you don't get any stabilization from the selfie camera while it's doing this so you do have to be careful with movement but I suppose if you're still the actual effect is pretty nice in my opinion now I'm hoping this works uh, this is just a demo using the rear camera just to show you the quality of the video using the portrait mode with the rear camera. And again, it's 1080p at 30 frames per second. But I hope this gives you an idea of how the video looks using the rear camera using the portrait mode. But you let me know what you think of the portrait mode video from the front and rear cameras. All right, so this is pretty cool. This is pro video mode. Now this has been around for a while. Well, it was around, then it wasn't, then it was again with Samsung phones. This was one of the sort of big features of Samsung phones, which people really used to value many moons ago. And then Samsung took it away and then reintroduced it then on later handsets. So this is pro video mode and it works on both the main and the ultra wide cameras. Now you've got this spot focus mode you can see here and I can change it to center weighted focus. And you've got this histogram at the top of the screen. You've got the microphone meter just in the bottom left hand corner. And then you've got all these different options then to change the ISO level, shutter speed, and the autofocus, etc. It's just to give you an idea of the of the on-screen UI for the pro video mode rather than the quality, because if I sat around playing around with the settings, we just the video would run into like the 50 minutes mark. But it's just to give you an idea of how it looks. And you can choose resolutions up to 4K60 for the main camera and for the ultra wide camera we cap out at 4K 30 frames per second, but you can see in pro mode, you now get 424 frames per second as well, as well as all of the others, apart from 60 obviously, because that doesn't work on the ultra wide camera. All right, so that's the end then of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 Ultimate Video Test. Considering this is using slightly older technology and so far as cameras are concerned, I think it does a really decent job in my opinion and overall you can get exactly you know all of the results you need from this phone and you get decent quality output at the same time so if you've got any comments or questions about anything you've seen in this video then please do leave those down in the comments and i will get back to you as soon as possible and don't forget if you're new around here then please do consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos like this coming on the channel very very soon but for now, this has been my ultimate video test for the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3. My name's Steve West, and I will catch you guys later.